So in 2018, McSweeney published a paper and basically they had high level athletes who were self-selected to one of two groups um, and they went on a ketogenic diet or a high carb diet for 12 weeks. And at the end of the time trial, they measured them. They did two tests. So one of them was a peak power. So they said, you know, they just measured what their peak power output was. And then another one was what they called a critical power test. So that went for three minutes and they had to sustain as high a level of performance as they could for three minutes. So a couple of interesting things. So on average, the ketogenic athletes did the time trial. They had a, a three-minute better time. Mm. They also had higher peak power outputs and they did significantly better on the critical power test. So clear evidence that ketogenic diets not only do not impair anaerobic performance, but it appears to improve it. So if you look at it like that, do these athletes need carbohydrate to have that level of performance? No, they do not. On uh, oral carbohydrates or even the taste of carbohydrates on something called rating of perceived exertion, mm. so it may be that there's a, a chemical release, maybe there's a release of dopamine into the mesolimbic pathway that's actually making people actually um, feel that the exercise is perhaps easier. But at the end of the day, when we actually put it to the test and we do, you know, physical testing of uh, power outputs and performance. A lot of it is nocebo. When somebody believes that they need carbs, they may perform better. And it's more of like a placebo effect. It takes at least four months, um, you know, and the data will show at least 12 weeks to keto adapt, but probably I think even longer um, before you're going to hit your straps mm. uh, with performance on a ketogenic diet. Now, how do we know this? So when your body burns fat, it initially can turn it into ketones. But if you can't efficiently use the ketones and the cellular machinery for your body to use the ketones does take some time to upregulate, then you'll actually expel some of those excess ketones in your urine. Now, uric acid and ketones compete for excretion through the kidneys into the urine. So that means if you actually have elevated ketone levels, um, and that are leaving your body through the urine, they'll actually prevent some of the uric acid from also leaving the body. And that means the uric acid level will increase in your blood. So we can actually use the increase um, in uric acid levels to see whether you're keto adapted and then monitor that to see how long it takes to return back to baseline. And when we've actually done that, it takes at least 12 weeks. Sometimes people having trouble with gout beginning a keto or carnivore eating approach, still experience gout attacks in a diminishing progression. Could this be the reason? Answer, gout is complicated, but this could be. I suggest you go to doctorstotrust.com, search on gout. There you will find about two dozen short videos on gout by trusted doctors such as Dr. Pete Delanoy, Ken Berry, Richard Johnson, Nadir Ali, Brett Schur, Paul Mabry, and of course, Paul Mason.